Aloha YouTube, Gabe here, back at it again with another deck profile. So because all of you keep fucking asking for it, we're gonna do a dominate deck profile. Because I hate myself, and I'm still putting money into this. So, the only starter that matters in dominate, or the only dominate starter that exists, is Modoy. So, when a, when a dominated unit attacks during your own turn, can move Mado to the soul to draw a card and give any rearguard 3k so you usually give it to the dominated unit just to make the number bigger it's a nice plus it's a nice break even but it gives power to make your opponent draw more there's no other starter that's really good with the dominate build so you run Modoy without questions next you go four copies of S demon stealth dragon shirinui aboro obviously um, so, at the beginning of your ride phase, you can call a card from your opponent's drop zone to their field. Then at the end of the turn, they retire it. And, uh, when you, G -unit, when you stride over a Boro, you can give, you can pick a rear guard, uh, dominate it, give it 4k, and it can attack anything. So, what's fun about this is if you're playing against Bloom, you can call a car on your opponent's field and make all the blooms activate to increase the power of fuckton. If you're playing against Unite, you can call like Bullergall and proc all their Unites so you can dominate them and abuse their power and stuff like that. So it activates on call, which is a bit of a double-edged sword. Because if the on call increases power, it's good for you. But if it's like a Glimmer Breath clone and it can give them a plus in return because it's still technically their unit until you dominate it. So, pick your call target smartly. This is the only card you would ever want to ride in this deck. Uh, next, Remarkable Stealth Rogue Morishige. You don't run the other Shiranui because it doesn't work on rear guard, and the fact that its stride skill costs a counter blast is act really actually hurts the deck because it can be kind of counter blast heavy. Also, binding a rear guard really doesn't help the dominate game plan because you're making them lose a rear guard. So while you do, we'll have a Shiranui unit on the Vanguard, it still is overall a minus because even if you ran both Shiranui's, you wouldn't want to ride the original anyway. You want to ride a Boro 100% of the time in the Dominate build. So because of that, you want to maximize your total plays by calling more Shige. And more Shige is a, a really nice card because what you do is you rest one of your rear guards, your opponent has to pick one of their cards and give it 3k, if they pick a card, uh, Morishige gains 10k. The reason why it has the if clause is if your opponent has an entire field of resist units or they don't have a field that all of Morishige doesn't get the 10k. But you can make Morishige a 21k beater, which is really good, especially after you just give your opponent a long onslaught of dominated pokes and you can just rain down a giant beat stick. So it's a really great card to call the rear. Next, you're running four copies of Stealth Dragon Genkai, who's the Glimmer Breath clone for the dom for the Dominate build, because Shiranui technically has two. So when a Dominated unit attacks during your turn, you Counter Blast one, Soul Blast one, you can draw a card, and Genkai gets 2k. What's great is this isn't once per turn, so on your Mujin Lord turn, when you dominate like four cards, if you have the uh, resources, you can just draw like four cards, which is really lit. So yeah, Genkai is a great four because it gives you resources. Next, you run four copies of Stealth Dragon Fudai. So you run it at four for two for both of its abilities because they're both really nice. So first ability is you Soul Blast one. Your opponent calls a card from their drop to an open rear guard circle, and at the end of the turn you retire it. So it's the same as Shiranui's skill, except your you can your opponent can't call on top to reduce their amount of units because some what some people do is if you're going into Mujin Lord they'll call something on top of one of their other regards just to reduce the amount of cards you can dominate they can't do that with Furai and its ability is really good against decks like Pale Moon or Grand Blue that get rid of their own field because you it gives them a dominate another dominate target and Furai's other ability is when a unit attacks during your turn he gets 2k and what's really nice about this is it doesn't specify dominated units, so you can attack with your other rear guards and still power up Furai a butt ton. Next, you're running four copies of Shibari Kusari to help fight uh, 
when you get ru to stop the rushes. There's no other rear guards that I really think are worth running in the Dominate build. Some people are running the Amber Clone, but I don't like that it costs a Counter Blast for its ability, and it requires a boost, so it's a bit slow, and it just doesn't really help a lot with the Dominate play, so I just like Kasari because it's a nice, sturdy wall, and I don't think Miyabi is that super vital for the deck, honestly. Undergrade run ones running four copies of Utsura with a dominate PG. So in your drop zone, if a dominated unit hits a vanguard, Utsura can tuck another copy of it from drop to bounce it. So you need two copies in your drop zone, so it works like Azurus, but it's on hit unfortunately. But it does give you a potentially get you a PG back, which is really, really nice. And while you do use a bit of counter blast, the deck isn't so counter blast heavy that you really don't need the unflip PG. So Utsura is a good one. Next, you're running four copies of Katari Gitsune, the Stride Fodder. It's a G deck. You're running four Stride Fodder, and because you're only running the one Shira Nui, you want to get you want to guarantee getting it. So, the reason why this deck profile is taking a bit late is I got this deck as it is uh, from somebody online for a trade. So, but there's some cards I'm trying to add to it that haven't come in the mail yet because a TCG player vendor is just taking forever. I ordered the cards like 10, 15 days ago and they haven't come yet, so I messaged them. So I'm gonna just show what I have and I'll tell you what it's supposed to be and you're gonna get to deal with that. So uh, how it is currently is three copies of Tenrei and three copies of Fuki. How it's supposed to be is two copies of, Fuki, of Tenrei and four copies of Stealth Dragon Tengai. So what Tengai does is, while it's on rearguard, if a dominated unit attacks during your turn, Tengai gets the red text ability at the end of the turn, move it to soul and unflip. The reason why you run it is because you do run, you do use soul blast and counter blast a little bit. So Tengai really helps mitigate that. You get to um, just get all of it, it refunds everything. It, by, it basically pays for one of Genkai's abilities for free. And Tenrei is nice because its first ability is continuous. If your Vanguard is Shira Nui, it gets the name, race, clan, and nation of all of your opponent's Vanguards. So if you're playing against a subclan, you can steal their 12k beaters because Shira Nui will be a member of that subclan. If you're playing against Brave, you, you can, uh, and your opponent's on Alt Mile, you can use um, Slayman to search for a grade 2 and other things like that. But it also has a really nice uh, pressure ability where... Um, if it boosts or hits a if it hits or boosts a successful attack on a vanguard, you can move it to soul to make your opponent discard a card. So Tenrei is a really nice one. I don't run Seizui because I run more Shige for the beat stick numbers, and uh, more Shige honestly hits bigger than Seizui most of the time. So I prefer that Seizui. I don't think is honestly all that necessary for the build. On to triggers. Triggers, are, I'm also missing some triggers, so we get to deal with that too. We're running four copies of Good Luck Smile Zashikahime, which is the Fighter's Collection Heal with the Skill. You use it when you go into the Flippy G Guard. Might as well have it than not. Four copies of the Shiranui Crit. It's a 5k crit move to Soul and Drop. I don't need to explain that. So, how the deck is currently is... Three crit, three well, three of the of Torasada, three Jirokichi, and two of the stand Onibadoshi. Onibadoshi is supposed to be both of these, so it's supposed to be no eight crit, four draw, no stand. So Torasada is red lightning, move it into soul counter charge one. Again, you use soul and counter blast, it refunds everything. And Jirokichi is Margul, but it's better because you can pick any player's rearguard to give it 3k, not just your own, so you can give it to a card you plan on dominating. And, yeah. The stands are fun, but honestly, the um, you run the crit and draw for their actual skills because they are kind of vital to the deck. Because moving to the soul and giving the power or the uh, countercharging is actually really important. Also, you kind of need a lot of your rear guards in this build, so having the draws is nice. The stand is good, but I just prefer the 8 crit 4 draw uh, deck lineup. 
So on to the G zone, we're running two copies of Enma Stealth uh, Dragon Magun Tenbu. So what it does is Counterblast 1, flip its uh, flip a copy of itself, pick one of your opponent's rear guards, it gets 3k and it can attack anything when you dominate it, and at the end of the battle kill the card that you dominated. So this is normally your go-to first stride because it basically gives your opponent a neg two because you retire the card you dominate and you make them either drop guard, deal a damage from a hit vanguard, or retire another rear guard from that attack. So it's a really nice card. It's just your it's a simple first stride. Yeah. Next, we are running four copies of Enma Stealth Lord Mushin Lord with that one fancy fancy SP, which is your usual finisher. It's Counterblast 1, flip over a copy of itself. For every face up G unit, pick any rear guard and give it 4k. And each opponent's rear guard that you gave 4k is dominated, and the dominated ones attack the vanguard. Unfortunately, you can't attack other rear guards, so you can't do board wipe shenanigans. But it gives you a lot of attacks. This is how you do a lot of draws off of Genkai and stuff like that. So. You normally use this when your opponent's at 4 or 5 damage because a, a trigger kind of makes it, invalidates it, but if your opponent's at 5 and you have a fat G-Zone and you can attack, you can give your opponent 5 attacks with all of their rear guards and then start your normal attacks. So it's a, it's a strong card and you can kind of wipe out hand. It's your go-to finisher, so you run it at 4. Oh, actually that reminds me, I missed something with Magun Tenbu. Magun Tenbu gives 3k for each face-up G unit, so if you decide to use Magun Tenbu in the late game when you have like 5 face-up G units, you can give a card 15k. So you can- Magun Tenbu also kind of acts like a finisher if you need to beat the shit out of your opponent or really want to activate Utsuroi, but that's a fun thing with Magun Tenbu. Unfortunately with Mujin Lord, the 4k doesn't stack, like if you're at GB10, you can't give things multiple 4ks, which would have made the card so much better and it, because it wouldn't be less susceptible to triggers, but that's not the world we live in. So, yeah. But Mujin Lord, definitely a 4-up staple for the Dominate build. On to the 1-ups. We're running one copy of Kengoku Tenbu. Uh, at the beginning of your battle phase, you can choose one of your opponent's rear guard, dominate it, and it can attack anything. You run this because you run a lot of 1-up G units. Like, I think I'm running, yeah, I'm running 4 1-up strides, and... If your opponent's not giving you counter blast, it's a it doesn't have a cost you can go into it, which is really nice because it's just a free dominate skill. Uh, we are running one copy of the GB8 Rikdo Stealth Dragon Roku Shikira Khan, which is GB8 when your opponent calls a card to Guardian Circle from their hand, so no intercepts or G guards. Unfortunately, you can counter blast or soul blast one, and your opponent gets has to discard two. This works nicely with the Dominate build, because um, when you stride over a Boro, you can attack with a front row rigger to basically get your four attacks. So it's a nice card, it's a good GB8, because it rips your opponent's hand to shreds. Next we're running one copy of Rikto Stealth Dragon Tsukamura Khan, which is on stride, counter blast to flip anything. Your, when it's placed on Van, pay cost, your opponent chooses four cards from their hand and binds everything else, so they can only guard with four cards for that turn, and they at the end of the turn they add everything else. Um, this is really good, because if you're not at GB8, or if your opponent's at low, da low enough damage to the point where they wouldn't guard, this lets you whip out your opponent's hand and still hopefully go for the kill. Like, if your opponent's at 5 damage, you go into this, and then you use a Boro Stride skill to dominate one of their front row rear guards. But this card costs $50, and it's not worth that price tag, so if you don't already have it, please don't run it. Just like, take out Kengoku Tenbu, or another, or like a G-Guard, and run four copies of Magun Tenbu, because it's really not worth the $50 price tag I'm running it, because it, I did a deck swap, and it came with it, so... That's the only real reason you should run Tsukamura Khan. If you got it from a trade or a pull, please don't spend $50 on this card. I implore you. Running one copy of Seabreeze, because ultimately it is a G deck. And it's usually your flip target with Tsukamura Khan, and it's going to be your flip target when GB12 comes out with the new Shiranui. On to the six G guards we're running. We're only one, running one copy of Zashika Hime, because honestly this card isn't that good. 
it's G flip and G guard. When you guard with her, your opponent either discards one or she gets 20k shield. This is only good if they have nothing in their hand, which is honestly really rare. You only run it because if you really need to drop and draw from the heal skill or you want to accelerate the amount of cards in your G zone, because with the GB8, Magun Tenbu, and Mujin Lord, they all get benefits from having a lot of face-up G units, so guarding into her gives you two more face-up G units to make them better, so that's honestly the only real reason why you run her. But like, it also makes your opponent discard a card, which can come in handy when you're trying to kill them. Next, you're running two copies of Gahora Khan. If you don't have Sukumara Khan, you'd probably want to take this out and the extra slot for the two more copies of Tenbu. When you guard with uh, Gahora Khan, Counterblast 1, Soul Blast 1, choose a Grade 1 rear guard in your opponent's back row and call it to Guard Circle. So, this was so close to being good, but it, was, it just came so far. It's grade ones only, so you can't take Flogel if you're playing Blasters. Um, and it's uh, it's back row, so if you're playing against Bloom and they called, um, what is it? And they called like Katrina's with Primavera, or you're playing against uh, Shadow Paladin and they went into their Egrun Ver turn, you can't take their front row grade ones to shut out attacks. So this is honestly just a really shit version of Denial Griffin, because it t has more of a cost, and while you can target another column to make it weaker, you can't shut completely shut out an attack. So you run it, I run it at two because I have the space, thanks to um, Sukumura Khan flipping anything, but if you don't have Sukumura Khan, you're probably going to want to drop this for uh, this in the extra slot for two Mogan Tenbus. You run two copies of Rectome, which is the on-guard drop-and-drop, because again, a lot of your rear guards are kind of important to do a lot of your plays, and like, you can still make- you can still do well if you're playing against Link Joker and they're locked, but a lot of the skills are pretty important, so being able to see the key rear guards can definitely prove handy. And one Dismal, because again, important rear guards, if you're playing against a deck that doesn't have retire power, you can protect them, like, Guarding Borashige is really nice for your beat sticking. Guarding Furai for more beat sticking and so on and so forth. Um, thank you for watching uh, Gabe's Mama Shiranui Dominatrix deck profile. All I've ever wanted to be in life is a Dominatrix, which is why I built this. So, uh, this is being recorded like three days. This is... It's Tuesday, and set 12 comes out Friday, which is why I'm recording it now before, so I can actually do a pre-set 12 without, um, without, so new new pre-set 12 deck profile. Um, I'll try to do set 12 as soon as I can, I'll order the stuff the day of. The deck's not gonna change a whole lot, you're honestly only running like two or three more cards, one G unit, two in the main deck. So, but we'll still do it, because content's content. And, yeah, all of you want Dominate stuff, so please watch this 30 times because of how many people asked for this, so you can keep giving us the money that we deserve for putting up with you.